and then you and then that's it it records to the cloud so when you're done record like with this session it'll literally save it onto the cloud of this user and password so then what you guys can go ahead and accept it and as we begin the question that i have is what is the purpose of prayer what is the purpose of prayer I want to hear what you have. To pull down heaven to earth. Van said to pull down heaven to earth. Amen. Anybody else? To get more close to God. To get closer to God. Amen. Anybody else? To get direction. Amen. Get intimate with God. Love it. Anybody to else? Make, to build a stronger relationship with him and learn more. Like, you know, just to stay like, um, oh, there's a phrase that um I we used I used to say in Puerto Rico, it's like to rebuild your battery, like to recharge yourself. To really, recharge like, yourself? Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? To keep the connection with God. To keep the connection with God. Love that, Pastor Angel. Anybody else? I don't know who's typing, but you could just say whatever you're typing. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. So those, God. that's probably Gwendolyn. I think I felt that when she got sassy or somebody yeah, else. They would have been. No, okay. Who's, who's typing? Just to say your answer. To me, um, when, I, um, when I pray, it's just... I don't know. It's just, to me, it's just such a special time. It's like I lose track of everybody and everything around me. And it's just my time with God. And it's not, and it's like you had stated, it's an exchange. But when I go before him, it's not even about what I want. It's totally about what he wants. So. And uh, anybody else? Like just getting to know him because we call him later, like we are made. So for me, prayer is always about getting to know him. I love it. Anybody else? Also about growing. Say it again, Karen. It's about growing. It's about, it's about growing. It's about growing like spiritually and getting like growing like, stronger in him. I love it. Yes. It's all of that. Anybody else before we start? For me, when I pray, it's like that intimacy with, with him. And I give it all to him. I surrender. That's what. That's the time that I surrendered it all to him. And I say, here, I give it all to you, God. And I, I'm, I'm, if whoever don't know me and those who know me, um, my granddaughter calls me, I'm the Chi-Chi. I'm a cry baby. I cry for everything. So I, when I pray, I cry it all. So I give it all to God. So that when I pray, I give it all to God. That's my I intimacy with him. I love it. Oh, you all bless me. Anybody else? Jamari, you unmuted. Did you want to say something? I said the same thing as Pastor Jackie, my in oh. intimacy with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for your answers. They were phenomenal. And it was so just touching because everybody grasped the idea of prayer. I want to take us even deeper than that. You know, God wants to take us deeper, deeper, because everything that we said is truth. He's going to give us so much more. We can go ahead and mute our phones. I'm gonna have another moment in there, a few more moments in there where you'll unmute, but because we're recording, we'll mute right now. The purpose of prayer is intimacy and communion. That is the purpose of prayer, intimacy and communion with God. Us drawing closer to God and God drawing closer to us. He wants prayer to be those moments 
of intimacy. Prayer should be a time for us to desire him, learn from him, and listen to the heart of the Father. That is our purpose in prayer, to desire him, learn from him, and listen to the heart of the Father. That is what Jesus did. When he came into those moments of prayer, his purpose of being there was to receive from the Father. His purpose of being there was to get the Father's will for the earth. His purpose of being there was to grab God's heart and relay his heart to God's people. That is our purpose in prayer, to get God's heart and relay his heart to his people. So if we're not coming to prayer for that reason, we need to adjust how we pray. We need to get God's heart for God's people. Prayer is not all about us. Yes, it's we're important. Yes, God is concerned about what we face and what we deal with, but it's not all about us. It's about what he wants. And so on this morning, the Lord wanted me to talk about intimacy. We talked about that prayer is intimacy and communion, but do we really understand what intimacy is? Do we understand that he's the lover of our soul? Do we understand that as our lover, as our husband, the word of God says that we're married to him, that he's married to the church, that he is our bridegroom. So if we understand that he's our bridegroom and, and we're married to him, then there needs to be an exchange of intimacy. And so I wanna put it in the natural because we're all grown here, we're all adults. So when you come into intimacy with your spouse or even with a lover or times that you've had a boyfriend and you've kissed or whatever you did, in those moments of intimacy, you let go of yourself. In those moments of intimacy, you surrender something to that person, whether it was just your faithfulness, right? Because you were like, I'm with you, it's exclusive. I'm not gonna date anybody else but you. When you fell in love with that person, you said everybody else is off limits. Some of us got rid of black books. Some of us was like, I'm getting rid of that phone book because I got all those other people's numbers in that book. But now that I'm with you, I don't need anybody else, right? Some of us feel that way about our spouses or about boyfriends or about people that we've been with. And we gave all of ourselves to them, even so much so that when we gave ourselves to them, we lost a part of us just so we could please them, right? We said, what do you like? And they said, we like this. And for those of us that have spouses that are into sports and we didn't like sports and they said, I like football. And we were like, we don't like football, but because you like football, let's watch football. And they said, I like fishing. And we were like, oh God, I don't really like fishing, but because you like fishing, I'm gonna learn about fishing. Listen, intimacy with God is the same way we need to come to him and say, God, what do you like? What's gonna make you happy, God? What's gonna please you, God? Wow, I don't like suffering, but because you suffered and you said, I gotta suffer to be one with you, it's worth it all just to know you, God, just to love you, God. The suffering is worth it all. Same way in your relationship. You and your spouse start having problems, he gets sick, you don't walk away. You say, I'm with you. You're going through something, I'm with you. I'm not gonna leave you here. Listen, it's the same way with Jesus. It has to be that way that we say, God, because we love you, we wanna know what you desire from us. God, because you love us, you wanna know what we desire from you. It's an exchange. It is a two-way relationship. It is not a one-way thing. It's two-way. And so if we have not been communicating with God that way, we have to change how we come into intimacy with the Lord. Prayer is about reverence. It's about understanding that the person that you're coming to, and I say person because some of us think that prayer is just a place. We think that prayer is just going to a church or prayer is just going to a meeting or prayer is just getting together with a group. But prayer is coming to love. 
He's love. When we come to prayer, we come to love. So it's not about a place. It's not about a thing. It's not about just asking for what you need. It's about coming into love and exchanging love with love. He's going to give you love. You're going to give him love and we're going to exchange. It's a place of divine love. And if you have not experienced that, you're going to. That is my prayer today. You're all going to experience that exchange of love because he wants us to have it. We just listened to a song that said, I didn't know that I could have a friend like you. If we don't know him to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother, if we don't know him to be that one that we can come to and just be ourselves with in every sense of the word, whether I've done wrong, whether I've done right, whether I've heard him, whether I have it, we can be ourselves just totally naked. The word of God says in Genesis that Adam and Eve were naked and not ashamed. Prayer is a place to get naked. I don't know about you, but times when I've been naked and somebody walks in on me, I'm like, oh, see. does anybody else have that experience where something has happened and you were exposed? I think about people on TV, on Super Bowl situations where a boob came out or something was exposed and now the whole world saw you, a part of you naked and they were embarrassed. They didn't know what to do. They had shame, right? That's real. You can laugh because it's real. It happens. But with Jesus, that nakedness is beautiful. That nakedness is holy. That nakedness is his desire. He sees you, Jomadi, and he says, you're beautiful. Every imperfection is beautiful to me. Everything that you don't think is good about you, I love about you. Everything that you think, oh God, I can't do that, or I'm fearful to do that. God says, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Just be naked, daughter. Just be naked, daughter. Sandra, those places where you're like, God, I don't know. I just don't know. I feel doubt, God. I don't know. God says, but I know, I know the thoughts that I have toward you, thoughts that are good and not evil to give you an expected end. He says, Sandra, I know. So you can be naked. You can be vulnerable. You can surrender. That's what prayer is. It's a place of surrender. It's a place of giving and him giving. And so my question to you is, when you go into prayer, are you naked? Are you truly naked? understanding what naked means. Naked means you stripped off everything that was on you. <laughs> I got to say that again. You stripped off everything that was on you, even down to underwear, right? You stripped that off. So those private areas are exposed. This nakedness before God, your private areas should be exposed the areas you're not proud of, the areas nobody else knows, God knows, but he wants you to expose them. He knows it, but he still wants to hear you say it. So exposing your nakedness, have you had those moments where you truly stripped off all of the stuff, all of the burdens, all of the cares, you stripped off all of the fear, you stripped off all of the confusion, you stripped off all of the I can't, you stripped off, God, maybe you don't want to talk to me. You stripped off all of those places. You stripped off the thought process of I'm not good enough to commune with God. That's not true. You are exactly what he desires. He longs to meet with you. He longs to meet with you. How many of us have had relationships and people wouldn't call you back or they didn't text you back or you said, I love you to them, but they didn't return it back. But God is saying, I'm giving it all back. I will never withhold from you because I love you. This love you can count on. This love has an expectation and everything you're expecting, you'll receive it from me because I love you unconditionally. There's nothing you could do that won't make me wanna meet with you. Nothing, nothing. There's nothing you can do that will make God say, I don't wanna meet with you today. He wants to meet with us. So I want you to unmute your phone. And the question is, have you had moments where you've been completely naked before God? 
this is a time of honesty. You don't have to feel bad about it. You don't have to go into your personal stuff. I just want to know if you've had those moments where you've been completely transparent and honest with God. You didn't have any hidden places that you said, God, I'm going to tuck this down, right? Because we don't want to be like Adam and Eve. They started out naked and not ashamed. But when sin came in, the Bible says they covered themselves with fig leaves. They covered themselves from their covering. Oh God, can we really understand that? That sometimes we cover ourselves from our covering. We can't cover what God has already covered. We just have to give it to him. So who wants to go first? I'm, I'm going to be honest. It hadn't been a completely naked and, not a, and unashamed. It hadn't been completely. So I want to repent for that. And it changes today. Come on, man. Come on, man. I love it. We've talked about that. Thank you, man. Anybody else? Um, I think about naked and unashamed. Many times we're like, we really think that we're naked. Or we come naked, but we come ashamed. Like we, we know you see our stuff. We know you see our stuff. And like Van, like it's like having that repentance, but sometimes then the repentance turns into shame. And so, yes, I'm coming before you and I'm naked, but I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that I have this lump here. Or I'm ashamed I have this bruise here, or I'm ashamed that I had sinned and I'm still wearing the shame of the sin. And now I'm trying to cover it up with leaves and I'm trying to cover it up with this clothing and I'm trying to cover it up with this, but I still want to be naked. I still want to be vulnerable, but I don't want you to see my filth. I don't want you to see that, you know, I got a little black head here or, or I got a pimple or, you know, like it's, we want to have the vulnerability without the exposure. We don't want the exposure. And so when I come before the Lord, there has been times that I'm naked, but I am completely ashamed as well. Mm -hmm. We're like, Lord, you know, there's better vessels. They speak better. They look better. They act better. You know, I start going down a checklist of, of shame. Yeah. Instead of just being completely vulnerable and saying, you know what? Yes, I have this, but you've already covered it. You know, I, I'm not ashamed because I know I'm repentance. And that's the key, Van, what you stated. It's like repenting. You know, I repent for this sin, but then believing that the son of God, that the blood of Jesus has cleansed me of all sin. So when I come before him, I can come before him naked and unashamed and, and knowing that he has forgiven me. He has forgiven me that the cross and the blood still work, that his power is still viable, that he is cleansing, healing, forgiving, redeeming. And when I come before him, I come before him naked and unashamed, unashamed. Thank you. Anybody else? Amen. I love that apostle naked and unashamed because here's the thing shame is something we have to strip off that's an outer garment right we got to take this off right i got a t-shirt on under here but the thing is when i take this off i'm freeing myself of that i'm freeing myself of the thing that was holding me now that was adding weight to me right because when we get naked our body is lighter when we get naked we don't feel the heaviness. Right now it's winter time. Some of us have snow where we are and we've got to bundle up. We've got to keep putting on layers of stuff to deal with the elements of the weather and the winter outside, right? But God is saying, when you're with me, you can take off that stuff. You can take off those garments. You can take off that shame. You can take off that worry. You can take off that fear, right? Because sometimes in prayer, I'll come to God with fear. And the Bible says we, cut, we have to come to him in faith. We have to come to him with an expectation. So I want to read something to you. And my prayer is that as we read it, it will provoke you. 
it will cause you to say, God, this is how we got to come. I'm reading from the scripture in Matthew 11. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me. Matthew 11. And I'm going to read starting at verse 28. I'm going to read at 28. And I believe I'm in the Amplified Version, just so you guys know what version I'm reading. And the scripture says in verse 28, come to me. There's a comma there. That comma means pause. There's a pause. So if you see a comma, there's a pause in the sentence. So the Lord is saying, come to me. I want you to come to me. Come to me. And then he says who? Who he wants to come. All who are weary and heavily burdened. And in the Amplified, it says, by religious rituals that provide no peace. Oh, God. I'm going to read that again because that thing hit me. Come to me. All who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. Wait a minute. How many of you have been to so many prayer services and you walked out the same way you walked in? It provided no peace. It provided no joy. It provided no restoration. There are people here on this call that are a part of our intercession group. And each of them can tell you when we come to intercession, we leave with peace. Is that true? We leave with joy. We leave with answers. We leave knowing what was the heart of God. That should be the situation every single time we come to prayer. If that's not happening, you're not praying effectively. That is his promise. That's his promise. So I'm going to keep reading this word. It says, come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you rest. There's a promise there. Come on. If you come, I'm going to give. There's the exchange. If you come, I'm going to give. There's an exchange. There's always an exchange with him. You come, I'll give. You bring to me, I'll give to you. You get naked before me, I'll clothe you. I'll cover you. That's the exchange. He's going to put something on you when you give something up. Amen. And it says, and I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. Oh, God. Oh, God. I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. So I want you guys to understand when we pray, it's not to get things. It's to receive a refreshing. It's to receive answers. It's to receive us being changed. Because listen, you could go into prayer with a problem and come out of your prayer and your problem is the same, but you should be changed. I should be changed because in that place of prayer, he changes me. He changes my perspective. He changes my thought process. He changes my attitude into gratitude. He changes me into a place of thanksgiving instead of a place of complaining. That's what happens in prayer. There's an exchange. I might come complaining. I might come heavy. I might come burdened. I might come frustrated. But when I leave, I leave with peace. I leave with joy. I leave with an understanding. I leave knowing that, God, you met me here. I came and you answered. So that's what prayer is supposed to be. We come, he answers. It's a promise in the word of God. He said, come and I'll give you. And it says here in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Hold on. When you come, you need to come to what? Learn. See, see we've been taught all wrong. The church the natural church, I'm not talking about his spiritual church. I'm talking about the natural church taught us wrong about prayer. I believe me and Van, we talked about this. The church taught us wrong about prayer. The church taught us that all we got to do is just come to God and just dump our stuff on them. Me and Apostle talked about just this wish list. 
this wish list. We come to God like he's Santa. What is that? What is that? That's what he was showing me. Like I'm Santa. Like you're going to come to Santa with your stuff and say, Santa, this is what I want for Christmas. God, this is what I want from you. And we just drop the list. We expect it to be given. And then when it's not given, then we get mad. And then we get an attitude. Then we're not okay. Then we don't want to pray. We don't want to pray. God, you didn't do it. I don't feel a purpose to pray. We've all done it. I'm not coming against anyone. Everybody's done it because we were taught wrong. We were misinformed. They misinformed us. That's not prayer at all. The wish list is not prayer. That doesn't mean that you can't give him your desires. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you should not just come dump them and then leave. There's no exchange in you dumping and leaving, right? You know, people say in the world, this is going to be a little funny, but I'm going to say it. People say in the world, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, that I don't want to just be your bed buddy or I don't want to be that one night stand. But we do God like that. We dump and then we leave. We get ours off and then we bone out. We just, we just walk away from God. What? That's intimacy? You getting what you need, but I'm staying unfulfilled? No, intimacy is exchange. Both people getting what they need. If I'm intimate with my husband, we should both be fulfilled in our intimacy with our husband. He's our husband. We should both be fulfilled. God is fulfilled and we're fulfilled. He's fulfilled because we're coming and we're trusting and we're loving and we're saying, God, whatever I can do to please you, I wanna do, I'm here to surrender. And we're pleased because he's saying, because you surrendered, this is what I'm gonna do. The Bible says that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So there's rewards in your seeking. Right, but we're not seeking him for just things. We're seeking him for who he is. So that's prayer. Prayer is seeking for who he is. So I wanna say this to you. He said, come to me all you are, who are weary and burdened and I'm gonna give you rest. It says here, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest. And then the Amplified, it says renewal, and blessed quiet for your souls. That's a promise. He gave us a promise in prayer that if you come, you will find rest. So if you don't have no peace, God said, come to me. But listen, there's a way we gotta come. We can't just come any kind of way because that's what we've been misinformed. We've been misinformed. We've been told we can just come, say what we gotta say and then go. We've been told we can come with two second prayers and I'm not saying that you can't do those prayers, but there should be time where you spend time with God. Because listen, nobody wants a five minute sexual experience in the natural. God doesn't want a five minute experience with you. He's your husband. We are comparing this to the natural. I'm keeping it real, we're all adults. God does not want that with you. You don't want five minutes from somebody, God don't want five minutes from you. Yes, there are moments where we don't have a lot of time, but even throughout the day, even when you don't have time to fully lay on your face and get on your knees, you can still talk to God all day long. Prayer is constant communication, right? Because you're at work and your boo is texting you, right? You're at school and your husband is, is texting you, honey this, honey that. Okay, God is saying, do that with me. Do that with me. Let's exchange all day long. Let's come together on your lunch. Let's talk. That's what God is saying. Let's talk. That hour, devote 30 minutes of that to me. That 30 minutes, give me 15. Give me some of that time, right? So that's what God wants, that exchange. So he says here, you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, what is a yoke? Anybody got a, a definition or an understanding of what is a yoke? I don't want you to look it up. I just want you to give me your thought process of that. Christine, you want to answer that? Something that ties you to someone? I mean, I think. Say it again. Go ahead, Christine. You can't talk and let her speak at the same time, sir. <laughs> right. We didn't, we didn't hear her. Say it again. <laughs> 
Something that ties you to someone. Thank you. It is a binding agent. So a yoke is something heavy that's put upon the neck. But when that heavy item is connected to something or someone else, it takes the weight off of that one thing, that one animal, and it causes both animals to work together. So in the spirit realm, when we are yoked to Jesus, that weight on us becomes light. That weight on us becomes lifted. Why? Because he takes that on. He takes on the heaviness that was around your neck and he bears those burdens. So that's what that yoke is. But a yoke is something you cannot disconnect from. A yoke is something that if it's not taken off of you, that you will have a hard time disconnecting. So God is saying, I want you to be yoked to me. I want you to be so connected to me that you don't want to disconnect. That sin can't disconnect you. That hurt can't disconnect you. That pain can't disconnect you. That disappointment can't disconnect you. That suffering won't disconnect you. That, that going through won't disconnect you. God is saying, I want you to be so connected that nothing that happens will cause you to leave this place of yoking. We were yoked for purpose. We were yoked for, for a future. We were yoked together so I could teach you and help you and love you. So the yoking has a purpose. So that's what we're yoked for. We're yoked to take on what he has. We're yoked. If there's a slower animal and they yoke that slow animal with the faster animal, they go the same speed. That yoking causes the slow animal to be the same because they're tied together. So when you're tied to God, you're the same. You become like him. We take on his character. We take on his nature. We take on his attributes. That's the yoking. We got to stay there. So that's what prayer is. It's a time for us to yoke with him, bond. Like she said, it's a bonding. It's a coming together. It's a time of connection. I believe it might have been Pastor Angel that said that, or Apostle Liz, but it's a time of connecting. It's a time of understanding who we are and whose we are. Amen? And I want you to understand that he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you feel heavy and you're bogged down and you can barely stand or you're so weighed down that you can't think, you got to get in the presence of the Lord. That means that you need that time of refreshing. That means I need that time of refreshing. In times when I'm heavy, I go to prayer. That's what we have to do. We have to go into that place of intimacy with God and get in his presence. Because he said in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. So if you don't have joy, you're not in his presence. You got to get in that place. Get into the place with God. Today, we're going to learn how to get into that place. I want to read something to you. I want you guys to turn with me in your Bibles. And if you don't get it first, it's okay. But I want you to, to hear something. It says in Isaiah 43 and 4. You can turn there or you can just listen. Isaiah 43 and 4. It says... Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. I'm going to read it again. Isaiah 43 and 4. Others were given in exchange for you. How precious are we to God that he would give others in exchange for you? Do we really understand the love of the Lord? That somebody else was in that accident instead of you. Somebody else got AIDS instead of you. Somebody else went into a place of catastrophe, but he spared you. Somebody next door to you, their house was broken into, but yours was kept safe. Understand this scripture. He gave others in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. So when shame tries to come, remember God is saying we're precious to him. 
It says you are honored and you are loved. I love you. So when you come, understand you're coming to love. You're coming to love. You're not coming to a one that's condemning you. You're not coming to the one that's that's looking at you and disappointed in you. You're coming to the one that loves you. I have to remind myself of that all the time because sometimes I think, God, I'm not worthy to come to you. But God says, yes, you are because I'm in you. So that makes you worthy to come to me. My spirit makes you worthy. So we need to understand in prayer to have effective prayer it means that we come together with the spirit of the living God. I don't want to read something to you. We need to understand this. I'm going to go into this. And then after this, we'll go into prayer. I want you to understand that we talked about prayer being communion. And communion takes faith. We can't do anything for God without faith. The word of God says in Matthew 21 and 22, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. That's the thing right there. We missed that whole last statement. Whatever you ask of God in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So if you come in doubting, if you come in frustrated, if you come in not believing, so many people come into prayer defeated. We cannot do that. We're going to go into that today because we, we got to change this mindset. Remember, we were taught wrong. We were taught wrong. We got to come into prayer with faith. Faith is what moves God. Faith activates heaven to move on your behalf. That's what moves God, your faith. The Bible says here in Romans, 10 and 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. How do you get faith? If you're struggling in your faith, go to the word. What does the word say about your issue? What does the word say about your relationship? What does the word say about your intimacy with God? What does God say about you in his word? Does he say, I hate you? Does he say, I dislike you, Karen? He says, I love you with an exceedingly great love. My love for you is so much that nothing you do can stop me from loving you. Nothing, nothing. I'm still going to love you. Even to the bitter end, I'm going to love you. So we have to understand that's what the word says. It says in Hebrews 11 and 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them who seek him. Listen, we have to come knowing he's going to reward us because we're seeking him. It's a place of prayer and faith. We cannot come and not believe. When you come, believe. When you come, say, God, I know you want to give this to me because you said you do. And it's in your word. It's, it's according to your will. We have to understand that prayer is a time when we come to God asking him for his will and praying for his will, right? We can't just pray our fleshly desires. That's where we've made the mistake. We've prayed out of flesh and not out of spirit. And the word of God says we have to pray in the spirit. Why? Because the spirit knows the deep things of God. It is the spirit of God that knows God. God. So your spirit connects with his spirit and you become a spiritual being that's able to pray in another dimension. Amen. So I want to say this. We need to understand what prayer is. I need you guys to write this down. If you have any questions, you can ask them. But I need you to write this down. What prayer is. We're going to start with number one. Prayer is spending time reverencing God. That's what it is, is spending time reverencing God. Number two, prayer is about a person, not a place or a ritual. Prayer is about a person, not a place or a ritual. When we come to God just because we're going to a place, because our pastor invited us to service or, or somebody told us to come to a prayer group, we're just going to that place. We're going to that meeting. We, are, we should be coming to meet the person of Jesus, not to just go to a meeting. 
Some of us dealt with rituals and prayer. I did. I know you guys had to. I was so sick of it. I was like, if this is prayer, what prayer is, I don't want it, Jesus. It's boring. I fall asleep. I keep hearing the same people praying. They ain't praying about nothing. The prayer is stupid. It's dumb. And we're praying about stuff that don't matter to God. Why are we praying this? The whole time they're praying from their flesh and not one scripture is praying. How do we pray and we don't pray the word? That's not proper. That's not his will. We can't pray and not pray his will. And for years in the church, we were praying and we didn't pray the will of God. We got to stop these behaviors. It messed us up. We didn't get what we wanted because they didn't know what they were doing but we're gonna know how to pray. God is teaching us how to pray. He don't want us to pray and not receive. Those days are done. No longer are we gonna pray and not receive from God. No more. The rituals are out. Let's kick them out. Just stay in your mind. I'm kicking out the rituals of prayer that didn't work. I'm kicking that stupidity out. I have to kick it out. And the third one is prayer is communication with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer is communication with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Number four, prayer is a two-way relationship, talking and listening. It's a two-way relationship, talking and listening. So I'm gonna give you a moment because I wanna hear from somebody on this. Have you ever had a relationship with somebody and that person, just talk all the time. You couldn't get a word in edgewise. And every time you talk to them, they just went on and on and on and on. And you couldn't say nothing. Has anybody had that experience? Yeah. How did it make you feel? Sandra, how did you feel when you had that experience? Thought I'm not worth it. Okay, listen. Yeah, I get like that. It didn't even matter, right? Yeah. Like you were unimportant, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I had, I have several siblings like that. And my one sibling's like, oh, you should talk to the other one, you know, cause you know, we, we lost a sibling. I'm like, we lost the one that was talking all the time that was doing all that. And he's blessed. He's in heaven, I hope. And then the other one that wants to talk to me, I'm just not in a place to spend so much time. Like I can't even imagine the Lord, but like, just, you know, no. I don't, I don't want to listen to you 24 seven. And then the moment I mentioned anything about me, oh, I got to go. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> right. I'm right. That's exactly it. Thank you for sharing that. Because there's some people that just go on and on and on and you can't get a word in. I was on the phone with someone and this person talked for two hours straight not one time could I interject. Not one time did she even ask me, what's going on with you? How's your life going? She just kept talking. And I was like, God, how is this possible? And they knew the Lord. And I was like, how is this possible? And God said, it happens to me all the time. I sat there like, oh God, that thing messed me. I was like, oh God. He said, people do it to me all the time. And I remember times when I did it to God. I came to him and I had so much on me that I just dumped, 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 dumped. And then when I was done and I felt like I was fine, I just left. I got up and I just moved on with my day. And we've done it. We've done it. But that's not prayer. Prayer is two-way communication. Prayer is talking and listening, right? You, When you are with the person that you love, you talk to them, but you listen to them. You ask them, how was your day today? You ask them, wow, what is it that you need? Are you hungry? Can I do something for you? That's the same thing with God. Lord, what is it that you need? What can I do for you today? What will make you happy today, God? You did what made me happy every day, but how can I make you happy today? Right? So that's prayer. Number four, oh, excuse me, number five. Prayer is praise thanksgiving, confession, adoration, supplication, and intercession with God. I'll read it again. It's praise, thanksgiving, confession, adoration, supplication, and intercession with God. 
Look those words up. They're going to bless you. We should come to prayer with praise. Can with praise on our lips. Say it again, you said? Okay. Please. Prayer is praise, thanksgiving, confession, adoration, supplication, and intercession with God. That is what prayer is. Number six, prayer is expectation. Prayer is expectation. When you come, you have to come expecting. You have to come expecting that God is going to give back to you. He's already told us. It's an exchange. We read it in the word. So don't say, God, I don't know if you want to bless me. I don't know if you hear me. Okay, we've already read it. We've already read it. So prayer is expectation. You come expecting God to hear you and you to hear him. It's an expectation. We have to expect to hear and expect that he will hear. It's expectation. It is availability. Oh, I'm going to give you something that, that my pastor used to say. This thing messed me up. It is availability. Prayer is availability. We have to make ourselves available to God. And my pastor used to always say, our accessibility to God is contingent upon our availability to him. So we can't expect God to be accessible if we're not available. That's the key. We cannot expect God to be accessible if we're not available. We have to be available to God. So he said to Abraham, Abraham is my friend. He called Abraham a friend, but what made Abraham a friend? What made him a friend? Ruby, what do you think made Abraham a friend of God? Because he spent time with him. Thank you, Ruby. Available. Thank you, Ruby. Available. He was available. He fully devoted himself in prayer. He fully gave everything he had to the Lord. Even when he messed up and did wrong, he still gave that back to God. So it's availability. He was a friend because he was available, right? True friendship takes availability. If I say I'm your friend, but you never get a call from me, I'm not really a friend because true friendship is availability. True friendship is me reciprocating what you're reciprocating to me. True friendship is I'm willing to give you everything I have and you're gonna give me everything you have. So I have a best friend. And if my best friend said I needed a kidney, I'm gonna give her my kidney. Most people wouldn't do that, but I would do that. I would give the kidney up. So that's the thing. Are we willing to be friends with God to where we're willing to give whatever it takes to be his friend? He wants that. Prayer is expectation, availability, and surrender. That's what prayer is. Prayer is expectation, availability, and surrender. Now I want you to know what prayer is not. This is key. This, you got to write this down. What prayer is not. <laughs> he hit me hard with this thing. I was like, oh, Jesus. Number one. Prayer is not a long wish list we give to God only when we want something from him. That is not prayer. That's not true prayer. We can do it, but that's not effective prayer. That won't get you any results with him. It is not a long wish list that we give to God only when we want something from God. So we only come to him in those moments when we have a wish list. We don't come to him regularly. We don't come to him daily. The Bible says we have to meditate on the word daily. We have to be in his presence daily. But that's not, th this thing of this long list, only when you need something, that's not prayer. That's not what he desires. He wants us to come to him all the time. Jesus. Number two, prayer is not a chore. I want to say this. Prayer is not a chore. It's an honor. It should not be a chore. Listen, we've all been a part of stuff where prayer was a chore. I'm just being real with you. 
I used to go to church and prayer was a chore. We were snotting, snotting, spitting, warring, coming against the devil. I rebuke that. We were doing all this stuff and there was no change. It was exhausting. I don't know if any of you was exhausted, but I was exhausted. We did all these rituals. We went to these prayer sessions all the time, every Sunday and every Saturday and every Friday and Wednesday nights. And there was no change and it was exhausting. And so he said, it's not a chore, it's an honor. So in times past where it was a chore, he doesn't want us to feel that way any longer. It should be an honor. Number three, prayer is not something we can do on our own. I need you to hear this. Prayer is not something we can do on our own. We were misinformed and lied to. People told us, all you got to do is go to God and pray. All you got to do is say whatever you feel on your heart. That's misinformation because we cannot pray on our own. That is not prayer. That is not even what the Bible calls prayer. It is only effective with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I want you to write down these scriptures because I want you to study that. John 17, 20 and 23. John 17, 20 and 23, Romans 8 and 26, Ephesians 6 and 18. And in those scriptures, it talks about how Jesus makes intercession for us. It talks about how the Holy Spirit in us intercedes for us and through us. So we do not do this on our own. He does the interceding. He does the praying. Prayer is not methodical. This is number four. Prayer is not methodical or a ritual. It should never be done the same way all the time. Wait a minute, I have to say this. I I have to say this. Prayer should never be done the same way all the time. We come to God every day with the same stuff, the same stuff. There's never a difference. We don't ever say nothing different. People have taught us that. It wasn't us. We were taught incorrectly. When you go to God, say this, say that, and we never get anything else. You might start one way, but it shouldn't be the same way the whole time, every time. You might start one way. That might be the way you start every time, but it should not be that way the whole way throughout the prayer. It should be something there that's different. God is a God of of newness. He's a God of transformation. He's a God of change. So if we always have the same thing, there's no change. And that's not God. So we have to stop that. We have to stop the rituals. That that thing is exhausting to Jesus, not just to us, but to him. Go ahead, Apostle. Um, it got to a point when I was praying, you know, in my past or whatever I, that was that I was doing, it got to the point that I literally, I'm no joke. I would tell Jesus, I'd be like the same thing I said yesterday. I say it today. Amen. <laughs> no lie. Like, I don't know how I'm alive. I'm alive by the grace of God. When I was in religion, I was trying to make this like quick with Jesus. Uh, The same thing I said yesterday. We're going to say it again today in Jesus name. Amen. I'm sorry. That is hilarious. I remember. I don't know if you guys ever did it, but I did. I'm just being honest. I'm being. I would say the same things, but I never said the same thing as yesterday. So that was pretty hilarious. I'm sorry. I've never heard that. I love you because that was just amazing. And I'm thankful for your transparency. I love it. We have to understand it should not be methodical or ritual. It should not be the same way every day. She said it. She wasn't even spending time. She was probably exhausted because she was taught incorrectly how to pray and prayer was boring. And if prayer is boring, we didn't learn right. (laughs) It should never be boring. Prayer should be exciting. There should be revelation. There should be visions. There should be things he shows you, tells you, reveals to you. It should never be boring. He's taken me to heaven in prayer. He's taken me to my mansion in prayer. I've been to the garden in prayer. He's taken me to other countries in prayer. I've been on on trips in prayer. I've been on vacations in prayer. I've never been to these places, but I've been there in prayer. So it should not be boring. It is exciting when we really know how to pray. And that's what he wants to teach us. Five, prayer is not praying our words alone. We have to write that down. 
Prayer is not praying our words alone. It's praying God's word. I can't say that to you enough. This is some of the reasons why we have not received what we've been asking God for is because we're praying our words and not his word. The Bible says he comes for his word. It says his word will not return void. So if your prayers are void and nothing's happening, you're not praying his word because his word will not return void. What he said, he'll do it. So we got to pray the word. Number six, prayer is never praying faithless prayers. Oh God, I'm about to go into this. I, I, I have to dissect this quickly. Prayer is never praying faithless prayers. Have you done this? Because I've done this. I'm, I'm being real. I've done this in the past where I said, maybe God, you don't care about the fact that I'm sick. Maybe God, you don't want to hear from me. Maybe God, you're not interested in my prayers. Maybe Lord, it doesn't matter to you what happens to me. What kind of nonsense is that? But I've done it, done it. Coming to God with this foolishness when he said, I need faith, but I came with foolishness. We cannot continue to come to God with faithless prayers, expecting him to answer. Prayer takes faith. And so we have to understand that his word is true. And if he said he wants you to be blessed, Ruby, that's exactly what we have to come into prayer saying. God, you said you want me to be blessed. God, you said I'll be blessed coming in and going out. God, you said everything that I put my hands to do, you will bless the work of my hands. God, you said you called me even before I was in my mother's womb. You knew me by name. So God, you want me to have what you desire for me. God, you said you will give me the desires of my heart because my heart now through faith and through prayer and time spent with you is your heart. So when we pray those types of prayers, God has to come for that. God has to give us what he said he would give us. He's not a man that he should lie. He's going to do it, but we got to pray his word. We cannot pray what we think. We cannot come with doubt, expecting God to do something. We've got to come with faith. Faith is what is needed to produce results. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we don't have faith when we come to prayer, you're not pleasing him in your prayer. We cannot have faithless prayers expecting to please God. It, it, it does not happen. And so we no longer are going to do that. After today, now we know we're not going to make this mistake. I repented, y'all. I repented. He's given us an opportunity. We can repent from that and say, Lord, I I'm sorry. I came to you with them faithless prayers. I came to you with the maybes and the ifs and what if you don't. And uh, we can't do that no more. Th that stops today. We cutting that. We're cutting the cord on the doubt and the faithless prayers. Okay. Number seven, constantly focusing on the devil instead of focusing on God. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Prayer is not spending more time talking about the enemy than we talk about the Savior. Yes, you have an enemy. Yes, you're under attack. Yes, you're going through some things. Yes, you've been disappointed. Yes, people have come against you. Yes, you've been mistreated. Yes, you've been hurt. Yes, you've been rejected. But listen, God deserves praise. He deserves glory. He deserves honor. He deserves to be lifted up. The Bible says if we lift him up, he will draw all men unto him. We got to lift him up. So we cannot lift up the enemy expecting God to do something great. No, he loves praise. He lives for praise. So we, we have to stop constantly focusing on the enemy. We have a God that's already defeated the enemy. So we come to prayer knowing that he's defeated. Yes, I'm hurting. Yes, my body does not feel good. But God, you said he's defeated already. Your word says in the end, you've already won. The fight is fixed, you guys. It's fixed. The enemy goes to the pit. That is the end. It's not a maybe. It's not what if it doesn't happen. No, it's going to happen. It's a fixed fight and you've won. So when you come into prayer, come in knowing I've won. I've won. I don't see it yet. Why? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you don't see it, but it still exists. It's in the heavens. You just got to pull it down into the earth. Van said it so perfectly. 
It is us pulling things down from heaven into the earth. That is our goal. When we're in prayer, we're talking to God, we're learning from God and we're pulling down what he says into the earth. And so this takes me to my last scripture and we end here and we go into prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to hear this, but I want you to read it. So I need you guys to turn to this scripture. The people in my group that are part of my intercession, they already know because we, we, we pray this all the time. Luke 11, Luke 11. This, this is where we got thrown off track, y'all. This is where the church, the natural church jacked us up and lied. They did not tell us this portion of prayer. They, they left this whole portion out and jacked us up. No more. We're not going to be misinformed anymore. Luke 11, we're going to start at verse one. And it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, they had enough respect to say, we're going to wait for him to finish. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Listen, prayer must be taught by Jesus. <laughs> we don't teach ourselves how to pray. I'm not teaching you how to pray. Jesus is teaching us how to pray. We got to ask him though, right? The disciple had to ask, teach us how to pray. When we came into those prayer meetings, did you ever once hear any of the leaders say, Jesus, in this meeting, teach us how to pray? No, they didn't. But I say that every time. Every time I get on my face, God, teach me how to pray because I don't know how to pray. I don't even know what to pray for. My heart is so heavy right now. I can't even think of anything that I'm supposed to think of. Sometimes your heart is so heavy. You're so burdened. You have so much anxiety. You have so much fear. You have so much concern, so much disappointment, whatever it is. Sometimes you can't think. And even when you can, whatever we come up with is never going to be better than what Jesus has. So they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And it says here, just as John taught his disciples. And I want to reveal something to you that Jesus revealed to me that messed me up. I was telling the apostle, this thing jacked me up. They asked him, teach us how to pray. But why did they ask Jesus that? These are people, if you know anything about the Jewish culture, these are people of prayer. They literally pray three times a day. We have people on this call that are from other cultures. And in your culture, it was probably a part of your culture to pray. It was just a natural part of your culture that when we go to school, we pray, right? When we come home with our family, we pray. Some of us, that was a culture in our family. But they prayed for all those years and still didn't know how to pray. They prayed morning, noon, and night. That was literally their life every day as Jews. Study it. Morning, noon, and night. So how powerful is it that for 40 years and they meet this man and after three years, they realize after all this time, we didn't know how to pray. The Sadducees and Pharisees and the leaders at our churches and in the temple, they did not teach us right. We see Jesus and when he prays, things happen. What? They're walking with Jesus and he goes and just touches a blind man and he starts to see. They're looking like his prayers are different than our prayers because when we pray, this stuff happens. People were sitting in the temple, had demons. And when Jesus came into the temple, the demons started crying out. That's and we've been in the same temple for 40 years and never seen a devil removed. So what have we not been doing? They realized it. We're not effective in what we've been doing three times a day. We devoted ourselves to God, but it was rituals. It wasn't spiritual. And God doesn't want rituals. He wants spiritual. He wants us to become spirit. So we no longer can do that. 
The disciples grasp the understanding that Jesus, whatever you're doing, we want to do. We want to know how to pray like you pray so that when we go to lay hands on somebody, they get well. They're no longer sick. When we go to cast out devils, they come out. And we're not like the men of Sceva where we get beat up by the devil because we didn't know how to pray because we spent so much time talking about the devil and we didn't talk about God. We don't want to be that. We want to know how to pray. And we're going to ask the one that knows prayer because it's in him that we pray. It's through him that we pray. It's for him that we pray. It's because of intimacy that we pray. So as we go into prayer, we're going to go into prayer with an expectation. We're going to go into prayer understanding that, God, you desire to hear from me. God, you desire to give me something that I've never had. God, there's going to be an exchange with us today. I just want you to close your eyes right now. And I just want you to say, God, help me to dump all the things that I thought I knew about prayer. And I'm asking you today to teach me, Jesus, how to pray. Teach me, Lord how to hear from you. Teach me, Lord, so that I can learn from you. I want to learn your ways. I want to learn what pleases you. I want to learn what makes you smile. I want to learn what spot to touch, and it just gets your attention. That's intimacy. You touching the spot, and it causing the other person to say, oh, yeah. God says, oh, yeah. You touch his spot when you worship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're calling on me. Oh, yeah. That's meeting me right there. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love when she says my name. I love when she says, I love you, Jesus. I love when she says, God, I can't live without you. I love when she says, Lord, just take this from me, God. I have this in my life and I'm stripping myself and giving it to you. God, teach us to pray today. Teach us to really seek your face today. Teach us, God, not to any longer come to you with rituals or the same words or the same things or a list of stuff to just dump on you, but teach us to come expecting that there's going to be an exchange. God, we just thank you for this. We thank you for the exchange now. Father, we repent for all the years that we prayed ritualistic prayers. We repent for all the years that we prayed what somebody else taught us, but it wasn't what you were teaching us or wanted to teach us. God, we repent for years of just coming and just telling you and dumping on you and complaining, but never thanking. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for never thanking because your word says in 2 Chronicles, it says that we must pray. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Our land needs to be healed. Our mind needs to be healed. Our bodies need to be healed. So we have to confess. We have to repent. You said if your people that are called by your name, if we would pray, we got to seek you when we pray. We got to turn away from what we've been doing when we pray. You've given us a method of prayer. Just in that scripture, we have a method of prayer. We can't just come dumping. We have to come seeking. So God, on today, we will pe be people that seek you in prayer. We will seek your face, not just what's in your hand, but we're going to seek your face. We don't come for the fish and the loaves. We come for the one that has the fish and the loaves, God. We come seeking on today. Apostle Liz, I'm going to turn it over to you so that you can lead us into prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Something that the Lord told me in reference to prayer, and I just wanted to share, that was amazing, by the way. 
I really enjoyed it. Um, every time we can learn about prayer, we just learn how to commune with God, how to communicate, how to have a relationship with him. And I don't know about you, but it never gets old. Like I hear the, the revelations and I hear what God is saying, and it never gets old to communicate with him. It never gets old. When he um, started speaking to me in reference to prayer here, something he said that we need to come to him in prayer. But when we come to him in prayer, we can't come to him with our character, but we have to come for his character. You know, so we no longer exist. My character doesn't matter. My opinions don't matter. My feelings don't matter. But when I come for his character, I spend time with him asking him what he wants, what he desires. What's this day about? You know, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. But he made this day for what? You know, and, and you know, we think about these things like Zephaniah 317, you know, he's a mighty warrior that sings over us. What is, what's the reasonings we're giving him to rejoice over us and sing over us? And so as we come into prayer and communion, we need to come for his character. What is his character? What are his attributes? Who is he? And does it matter? Like everything she said, you know, does your list, does it have weight compared to his attributes? Does it have weight compared to his character? What does your wants, desires, and needs, what does that matter to his attributes? Like it doesn't even hold weight because he's going to provide the desires of your heart. The word says it. So when you come to him with a list, when he's already providing, it's like before you call, I'm answering. So do we need to come to him with all these wish lists, like she said? And the answer is no. And so today, my prayer, I'm going to pray that we really come for his character. We come in reverence to who he is, not what he does. That when we come to him, we come to him for the exchange of everything he is and that we die to self. That was something my mom used to always say. We need to die to self. We need to die to self. But to really understand to die to self means you don't exist. When you come before him, it's about him. It's about him. Everything's about him. Teach me to pray. Could you imagine everything we were taught? Everything we were taught. Father, I ask you to remove everything we were taught that's erroneous. Everything, every religious um, every dogma, everything that was structured, everything that was made up in lists, everything that we were told that prayer was, just make a checklist, make a list of your friend's name. Father God, we repent for all these checklists. We repent for every time we came to you with a bunch of lists and never acknowledged you. We never acknowledged who you are, acknowledge who you've been, what you've done in our lives, and not understood the value of praying, the value of communion, the value of, of just sitting down and hearing your voice. Every great man and woman of God that took time in the word, Father, to speak to you, to go into prayer, to set themselves apart, Father God, like even Jesus going to the garden, even Jesus going to different places, and Moses and people going to the mountain and people just spending time with you. It was never to come before you with lists. So we repent for every list. I repent for every list. I repent for every time I made it a task and a burden and something to check off a list, something to tell my pastor, yes, I prayed today. Father God, I rebuke that and every checklist and everything where it has become such a burden to just sit down. And even like you, Jesus told his disciples, you could not even pray with me for an hour. So Father, I ask us that we remove the constraints of, of chronological time, that we find time in Kairos, that we make time for those revelations and Rima, that we make time in our chronological time to receive from you in Kairos, that it just be so amazing that we won't have to 
want to come out, that people will want to call us and we'll be like, I'm busy. I'm talking to Jesus. Stop this. Father God, all the madness of schedules, we surrender our agendas. We surrender our schedules. We surrender our plans. We surrender our purposes. We surrender our careers. We surrender everything to just commune with you, that we be so desperate and hungry and thirsty that it is only satisfied by time in communion and prayer. I rebuke every excuse. I rebuke every sickness, infirmity, tiredness, every spirit of infirmity that comes upon us and sleepiness that comes upon us when we're going into prayer that all of a sudden we just want to go to sleep. I rebuke that, that the enemy just wants to weigh us down and oppress us the, during the most beautiful time of intimacy with you. I rebuke every intimacy, intimacy issue we have with man that we translate it to God. Every issue that we have with our earthly fathers, Father God. God, we forgive our fathers so that we can come to you and know that it's going to be the best relationship with the father that we've ever had. Even if our mother and our father shall forsake us, you will be there. You are here. And so we know that when we come to our Abba, we are going to cry Abba. We're going to cry Abba because we're coming before you, not as sinners. We're not coming before you as church folk. We are coming before you as sons and daughters of royal priesthood. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We come before you boldly in confidence to the throne of grace, knowing that our daddy's going to take care of us. We don't come before you wanting and desiring things because we know you got us. You are our provider. You are our God. You are everything to us. So when we come before you as Abba, as our daddy, we know that we can come in to the throne room and be like, daddy, I love you. I want nothing from you. I just want you. I just want you. We just want you. We just want to pray to you. We just want to love you. We just want to hear the instructions for this day. We want to hear the instructions for this week. We want to hear the instructions for this month. We want to hear the instructions for 2022. We want to hear the instructions for our family. We want to hear what you want. Every great leader that went and took time with you, even Jesus took time to pray to himself, to his daddy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one. I don't even understand the dynamics of coming to pray to yourself, Father, but I ask you that you teach us how to pray, Jesus. Teach us how to pray, Jesus. Teach us how to pray. Father God, I just re release right now. I remove all confusion. I remove all deaf and dumb spirits. I remove every disability, and, and things that we battle with, with education that the enemy has put, attention deficit, hyperactivity, every like brain issues, things that have happened to the brain with COVID, even those things that brain fog has come in with, de with death, Father God. We rebuke that right now so that our minds may be fully the mind of Christ and operate and ready to pray and come before you with the mind of Christ. Jesus, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to speak. Teach us how to love. Teach us how to commune with you. Teach us how to come before your daddy. Teach us how to come before our daddy. Teach us how to be, you know, in love with you. Teach us that prayer is love. Prayer is an exchange. Prayer is just shutting our mouths and our thoughts and our anxiety. We cast every care upon you. We don't pick it up after we leave. We cast it all upon you for you care way better than we could ever care. You can, you're not even going to stress about it. Why? Because you had the solution before we had the problem. If we come before you knowing that the solution is already provided, we don't come before you with worry and stress and, and pressures of the world, Father God. So Father God, let us not come before you and talk more about Satan and give glory onto the things that he's doing, but that we understand it is finished. The words that Jesus said, it is finished. When we speak to you, when we talk to you, we spend more time glorifying your holy name because we know that everything was done at the cross. Salvation was done at the cross. Healing was done at the cross. Provision, everything. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, that we come before you understanding that prayer is all about you and not about us, that we understand 
and we receive the revelation today, we will not lose the seed of this word, Father God. The crows will not come and pick at it. People will not come pick at it. Father God, I rebuke every religious spirit, every word, every ill word spoken, every curse that has been declared over these, these souls and group and unity, Father God. What we have done is come into a unity of faith where you require us to have faith and prayer, Father God, and we come in with faith. We come in with boldness. We come in understanding that there is power in this agreement. There is power in the education and revelation and understanding we are receiving today. And we will not let anything take that away. Father God, grow this seed of faith. Grow the seed of your word. Grow passion, a desperation, a hunger that we're willing to drag on the ground to come before you. We know we don't have to, but that we're willing to drag on the ground to come and just touch your hem, even though we have access to you, Father God, that we'd be so desperate, that we be naked and unashamed. Father God, I remove all shame from us, all shame from our lives, all shame from sin, every sin right now. We repent for every sin in the mind, every sin in our thoughts, every sin of sexual immorality and perversion and things we see, Father God. We repent for everything we watch that is not like you, everything we hear that is not like you, Father God. We repent for ill words spoken, every curse, every declaration, even vows and oaths and things that we have stated out of our mouths, out of our hearts, and out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak your praises. Our mouth will come before you loving you. Our mouth will be surrendered unto you because our hearts are surrendered unto you. Our minds are surrendered unto you. Our bodies are yours, Father God, for the taking. Just take Take what you want. Do what you want. We surrender to your will. We will not come before you and pray our vain babble prayers. We will not pray prayers that mean nothing. We will pray prayers from your will, from your perspective. Father God, I release an apostolic and prophetic mindset like never before that we pray from heaven down, that just like Van said, that we pray heaven down, but we're going to pray from the perspective of heaven in the celestial seating where we belong. We're going to pray knowing it is ours, knowing it is finished, knowing that our family members are healed, knowing that people around us are saved, knowing that our cities are saved, our towns are saved, our states are saved, our communities saved, our states, our country. We declare salvation and healing, we declare that Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of our earth, of our world, Father. We come before you knowing who we are and whose we are. We don't come in with weak prayers. We don't come in with shame. We come in boldly before the throne of grace, knowing that you are our daddy, knowing that the son is our groom, the lover of our soul, that we come in knowing that we have rights, we have an inheritance, knowing that Christ in us, the hope of glory, it is easy to come and pray before you. It is easy to come and hear you. It is easy to fall in love with you. We are in love with you. Put that in us, a passion, like when people fall in love for the first time, that we, we you restore that, you restore the joy of our salvation and you restore that love in us that we're so desperate to please you that we never come before you again with an attitude of weakness, with an attitude of lack, with an attitude of faithlessness, that we come before you knowing that you're going to provide for the desires of our heart, but we come so that you, that you burden us, what burdens your heart, what is happening on this earth, burden our hearts, call us out, the different ministries that we have, Father God, that we wake up every day knowing that your mercies are new, knowing that we have work to do, knowing that there is purpose on this earth and we will not waver. We will do whatever needs to be done, no matter the cost. I release spirit and boldness and fire and passion and desperation to please you over us right now in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer. It was amazing and I'm grateful, I'm honored. Um, I wanna give uh, moments, if anyone has anything that they wanna say or even what you learned today or what God revealed to you that maybe you didn't know before, um, you can go ahead and speak. If not, that's fine too. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be here because I learned a whole lot. I have three pages of notes. So um, 
I, I really do appreciate I learned a whole, whole lot. And I'm like, I sat here like learning so much today. It's just, I really do appreciate it. I learned, I was never taught this. So, and now that I know this, now I can effectively pray. And I repent for the times where I just came with a, like basically what you guys said. Because I thought that was prayer. I thought it was a wish list. Like you come to God and you just leave and that's it. I thought that was it. And I, I, I repent for it. And I, I, I was like, I was there and like she was here. I was like, I'm sorry, God. Dang, I was wrong. So, and I appreciate it. I was like, you guys, you just guys just cut us up all the time. I, I really appreciate it for um, all of our leaders. I really do. I'm grateful for each and one of you. And I thank you for um, spreading your wisdom. So I thank you guys. Amen. Thank you, Chris. I, I wanted to thank you as well, Prophet Wani. Um, this has been a great learning experience for me as well. Um, I've basically never been taught to pray outside of here. So I've just kind of like gone with the flow and tried to figure it out. And so I'm, I'm so grateful to you that you have given us this wisdom because I mean, I have, you know, just kind of like, done the same thing you know like what 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 do I need what what do people that I know need you know those different things so um I, I do repent that you know now I know not to do that and that I will move forward and use God's words instead of using my own words and overthinking everything which is like when I when I talk to God I try to be very um Lately, I've, I've tried to watch what I say to God, which also has interrupted my prayer life because I'm like, I don't want to say just a normal prayer. I want to acknowledge God and what he does. So I'm thankful to you that you have given me the wisdom that I, that I was searching for and needing. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Um, the part where you talked about um, naked and unashamed before God, um, like Pastor Liz, or Apostle Liz said um, on the, I think so many times, like I've come to him naked, but totally ashamed. Mm -hmm. And um, in in that, like, I'm not able to hear him because I'm so ashamed of, of myself. Um, so yeah, that was very, very good for me to hear. And thank you for being honest about that, Ruby. Amen. I wanted to say, I think a lot of us come to him like that, you know, with that shame of certain things. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing that we have to realize that at the cross, he removed the shame. I have to remind myself of that, that God, that shame was removed when you shed your blood for us. You know, so in that place of prayer, I'm asking God always remind me of the cross. Remind me of the cross. Van, did you have something you wanted to say? <laughs> I just wanted to say that I am grateful. I'm grateful to be connected. Um, I just grew another level. Um, a lot of times we we get so busy doing other stuff that we don't spend the ample amount of time that we need to spend with God. So I just, I just thank, I thank God for, for him being him and him showing me, me. Um, I'm just, I'm just so grateful. And I, I thank you guys for, for everything and for having me. I'm so glad to have you on. You know, I love you. Um, before we go, we will be doing this once a month. Oh, sorry, Christine, go ahead. I, I waited too long. I know that's what I do. <laughs> um, so when you talked about the nakedness, um, something that really stood out to me, or I just felt the spirit tell me justification. When Apostle was talking about being ashamed, I feel like it's easy for me to come and, you know, be naked before him, but justify the reason why I covered it. And mm -hmm. so like the justification is, was my shame. And so I, yeah. And then when we were listening to the song of um, the communion there in the end, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. 
and it talks about how we forfeit our peace and the burdens, the needless burdens that we carry. And like when we, when we are, I just had such a revelation when we are naked yet we're choosing to be ashamed or justifying, we're forfeiting the peace that is ours. And it just, it just smacked me. I was like, Oh my God, I have been forfeiting my own peace. Like he has given it to me, but I've been forfeiting it because I don't trust him enough to take that shame or, Oh, it just really, hit. Yeah, all of this was so good. And, um, I just want to thank you for teaching it. It's amazing. I always receive so much when you teach me, so thank you. And Karen wants to talk to you. I just want to thank you for sharing what you did um, and opening the call and being willing to teach us. Um, I learned a lot about it. I've been asking God. I, I don't know how to pray, and so I appreciate everything that you shared, and the bottle is too. Um, like, I, I've always dealt with this um, when other people pray to compare myself, and I don't know how to pray, and so I want to know how to pray, and like I repent for coming to him with a list and all of that, and like like you said, like we've been taught wrong all these years, and so I want to know how to pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead, Apostolos. I, I agree with you, Karen, like in reference to not knowing how to pray. Um, when I first like joined, I don't know what it was. I don't even think I joined anything, got put it together. Um, mm -hmm. When I first prayed, I was like, all right, I, I got this right. And then um, I heard Prophet Wani pray and I said, I don't know what I'm doing. Forget it. I quit. Like I really said that. I, I got off the call. I think Pastor Jackie myself, Christine, and, and others that have been in the group were like, I don't even know how to pray. Like I was like, and then that's where the Lord really blessed us and, and really said, you know, sh this person is the person that needs to lead the prayer group, even though the person, sometimes we battle with our own insecurities of leading, but the reality is, you know, when you get together with people that, that are learning to pray as well, it, it'll sharpen you, you know? So I really believe that my prayer life has increased because we're all sharpening each other. So Karen, as, as you continue in this journey, you will get better. At the beginning, I was like, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I honestly, they know. At, when, I, when we would first start, I would write notes. I still write notes. I write notes and you will see me like, okay, I got, and, and you guys are like, oh, but you're an apostle. That doesn't mean anything. When you pray with, with prophet one and you pray with some of the people we pray with you, I need checklists because these people are good and they know the whole Bible. I'm still learning. <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, when somebody can cite Genesis through revelation and you're like, it's somewhere in the Bible, <laughs> you got to learn. And so I, I really can empathize in that area. And, and I would say, don't give up. And when you pray with others, don't feel insecure. Don't compare it with them, you know, because what God gives you to you, it may be like, okay, this is a simple prayer, but that, that, that three words in a prayer may be what we all need to hear, you know? So I, like, I don't want you to ever feel like, like it's okay. I'm comparing myself at the beginning. I did. I didn't even want to pray. And she would say pray. And I'm like, oh God, here we go. And it was like, I get stressed. But I broke through it because Jesus is worth it. You know, Jesus is worth it. You know, my insecurity threw it down. I didn't know the word well. Sometimes I'm citing, oh, yeah, Peter did this, but it was really Paul. I have, like, I'm still learning. And it was because I didn't pay attention when it was being taught to me. So now I'm really relearning everything as I'm going. So, you know, don't, don't feel bad. I've. I'm still there. Just wanted to share that. And I'm still there too, Karen. I know some of them, they Just look at stop. me and, and they all, they always Just do stop. this. They always, they always do this to me. They always give me this look like, yeah, whatever. But honestly, I'm still learning too. And as much as I teach about prayer, I love prayer. Like prayer is just my life. They know like people that know me know that is my life. I literally, I go in my closet and I'm like, Lord, what do I wear today? Lord, how do you want me to wear my hair today? Like it literally is just a part of me to just talk to God about everything. 
And that's how the Holy Spirit taught me. He taught me to come to him about everything. Even things that we think are stupid or minute or don't matter. I come to him about everything. And he taught me how to pray from those situations, just how to trust him for everything. And so I would say to you, when we pray in a group setting like this, just ignore everybody. Don't look at the faces. I close my eyes because my attention is on him. He's my audience. I love all of you, but he's my audience. I'm not praying to you. I'm praying to him and we're praying together. But he's my audience. So when you pray, Karen, even if it's just one sentence, just make sure Jesus is your audience. And then it won't bother you what you do know or don't know because you know whatever's needed because Christ is in you. When you've accept, when you accepted Christ, you accepted his wisdom. So in those moments where you're like, oh God, I don't know what to say. Everybody's looking at me. I'm about to pray. Oh God, I used to get like that. I still get like that. Even in this setting, I, I told Apostle last night, like, I'm so nervous. Oh my God, I'm a guy. And she's like, really? Like, okay. But I still get like that. And it's very hard for me to pray in front of people as much as I love to pray. But in those moments, you have to just focus and say, God, you're my, you're my audience. What do you want to hear from me? What do you want to speak through me? You know, and, and just start with that. It just starts with a desire. That's it. It doesn't have to be profound words. I don't want anybody to sound like me. And I don't want to sound like anybody else. I just want to pray what he prays. I just want to say what God tells me to say. And that's how we all have to do it. Just pray whatever God wants you to pray. If your burden is for little children that are sick and hurting, Pray that prayer. Pray about those kids. You know, if your burden is about your community and you see so many people messed up, pray about those situations. If your burden is seeing, you know, um, people that are caught or stuck in the act of adultery or in lesbianism or homosexuality, Pray those prayers because God loves everybody. He loves us. He loves them. He loves anybody, you know, and we've all been there. We've all been in some type of sin. We've all still deal with sin, right? Because we're not absent from sin. Just because Jesus came in, we're not absent from sin. We are absent from being stuck in it, but it doesn't mean that it won't try to come to our life. And so we have to constantly put that down. We have to constantly give it to him. So I just wanted to encourage you, Karen, that, that the fact that you have a hunger, God is going to do so much with that hunger. I see it. I know it. You don't just have a hunger to pray. You have a hunger to study. And that's big. That's big. That's why we're connected. That's big. All God needs is a hunger. He said, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you'll be filled. So he's going to fill that place. So I just wanted to encourage you with that. I uh, wanted to encourage you guys that we'll be doing this once a month. We will come together next month. Today was our first meeting. So we talked about a lot of stuff today. I wanted to really teach you guys about prayer so that when we come together to pray, you'll understand why we do what we do. Um, on next month, we'll really be talking a little bit more about allowing the Holy Spirit through us to pray. Because the thing is, he's our helper. The Bible says that Jesus said, I'm going to send you the comforter and he's going to teach you all things. So on next month, we're going to be talking about the teacher. We'll be talking about the helper. We'll be talking about the one who knows God better than anybody. We'll be talking about the one who helps us to pray when we don't know what to pray. So that's what we'll do next month. And we'll also go into activating prayer. Each one of you in this place, you pray. The people in our group, I remember they used to come on, Christine used to be very timid in the beginning. She'd be like, oh my God, I don't want to pray in front of these people. And she'd be like, just please don't make me go after Apostle or Prophet Wadi. And now she doesn't care. Now I can put her in the beginning and she's good. I can put her in the end and she's good. It's because she has an intimate walk with God. And it doesn't matter about us. It matters about him and her. And we all love it. We learn so much from her. When she opens her mouth and God feels it, it's amazing. 
And so God does that. He teaches us how to pray and he teaches us how to get that wisdom that he has so that we can convey it to others. So I want to leave you with homework as we get off the call. Yes, there is homework. I know everybody's like, oh, no. you got a whole month to do it. And no teacher gives you 30 days to get an assignment done. But you got 30 old days. So I expect you guys to do it. And your assignment is, I want you to study Jesus in the Bible and the prayers that he prayed and how he prayed. What was his posture in prayer? What was Jesus' posture in prayer? How did he do it? When did he do it? Why did he do it? Did he focus on himself? Did he focus on others? What was his posture in prayer? So I want you to study that. The second part to the assignment is I want you to study the people of God in the scriptures. And I want you to find the effect of prayers and what their effect was. So for instance, I'm gonna give you an example. We can talk about Elijah, right? Elijah prayed. He was dealing with the prophets of Baal and these prophets were wicked, they were demonic and they were false prophets. And he began to pray. And when he prayed, he asked the Lord to send down fire from heaven that would burn up his sacrifice, but that they would see and know that God was real. And so what was the effectiveness of that prayer? The effectiveness of that prayer was that the sacrifice was burned, but the prophets were destroyed. Those false prophets were destroyed. So prayer has effectiveness. So I want you to study the different Bible characters and what was the effectiveness of their prayer. And somebody is gonna stand out to you. Somebody is gonna, that one of those people is gonna make you say, wow, I feel like I'm drawn to him or to her or to what they did. I feel like that's me, Lord. You know, we can identify with certain people in the word of God. So as you study that, I want you to say, what do I identify with? Not necessarily you being like them, but the things that they did would be something you would do. So I just, I want you to study that. On next month, when we come back together, we'll deal with that. Um, and I'll, I'll have you turn in your little assignments to me. Yes, I'm going to um, have you guys email that to me. I'm going to have you email that. I'm going to put my email in the chat. And you guys can send that to me. Um, you can do it in 30 days or you can do it sooner, however you feel led to do it. But I'm going to put my um, email in the chat. And we are actually done. I appreciate you guys taking your time out of your Saturday to come together with us. Um, it was a blessing. And I know that the Lord wants us to continue in his presence. So even though we leave this atmosphere, stay in the presence of God, hunger and thirst, go into prayer when we get off of this call and ask the Lord, teach me how to pray today. Teach me how to pray today. We talked about it, but teach me how to pray today. Can you guys see my email? Okay. Teach me how to pray today. Ask the Lord, give me your wisdom. What is your heart, God? What is your heart for your people? What is your heart for our nation? What is your heart for my, my relationships? What is your heart for what I'm doing now? How do you feel about that? And then expect God to answer. He may not answer you audibly. He may answer you through the word. You open the scriptures and God just leads you to a scripture. And you'd be like, wow, that's exactly what I needed because he works like that. He might answer you through somebody else later that day. And you'd be like, wow, that's exactly what I was asking God about in prayer. And you just summed that up for me. So just have an expectation the rest of the day. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you guys for joining. You have an amazing rest of your day. Apostle Liz, did you have anything to say before we go? Yeah.
Yeah, I'm going to just say the email, um, morganjones3 at gmail.com. The reason I'm saying it is just because there'll be people who will watch the v replay but not see it, the chat. So it is morganjones, M-O-R-G-E-N-J-O-N-E-S-3, the number, at gmail.com. So they can email their assignments too. Amen. Have a good day, everybody. I love you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye. 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 God bless you. Bye. God bless. God bless.